All right, so for this exercise, I'm gonna be putting my reference photo into Photoshop and putting the cutout filter on it, which is going to break it down into flat value shapes. And the cool thing about this filter is that you can change the amount of value shapes that the photo is broken down into. So for this exercise, I'm gonna first paint my reference photo with it broken down into just two values, light and dark. And then I'm gonna adjust the filter to show more value shapes and then add those onto the painting. In this video, I'm gonna be showing two examples of this. And I'm also gonna be showing how this exercise translates to the process of painting a portrait normally. All right, welcome to Paint Coach. My name is Chris Fornatero and I'm here to help simplify oil painting so that you can get better faster. Now this exercise actually comes directly from my Foundations of Oil Painting course. A lot of students that have taken the course have said that this exercise helped them a lot and I think it's a great insight into the process of painting a portrait. So let's jump on in. So with the first portrait, I only do it for two levels, but in the second one, I'm gonna do it for three levels. So make sure you stick around for that. So I start by drawing and blocking out the big shapes with thin paint. That's paint thinned out with paint thinner. And this is exactly how I would start a normal portrait. I'd use thin paint and I'd be working on my drawing and figuring out where the big light and dark shapes are. Even when I'm doing normal portraits, I'm first only thinking about it in two values, light and dark. I wanna get those mapped out first. So this exercise is also gonna help you in controlling your paint thickness. I always like to work thin to thick, and in this exercise, I do the same. So once the drawing is all figured out, I go in and I block in the dark side with just one flat color, and then I do the same with the light side, just one flat color. Again, this is pretty much what I do at the beginning stages of a normal portrait. This process of breaking the subject down into two families, the light family and the shadow family, is something that I do even when I'm not painting a portrait. I do this with still life. If you've seen any of my still life uh, painting videos, you'll see me break down the subject into just light and dark first. And then as I paint, I find subtle variations of value and color within those two families that I identified at the beginning of the painting. You see, portraits, still lifes, landscapes, they're all connected. So I always recommend practicing all of them. Now with this filter, there are different colors happening. Like there's a different color in the beard and the shirt, but they're all the same value, which is mainly what I'm focused on right now. But you could do this exercise in black and white and it still work. So before we move on to the next level, I wanna show you how this all works if I was painting a normal portrait. You can see how much of a similar process it is of getting the drawing in, blocking out the big shapes of flat color with thin paint. You know, at the beginning of this, I'm only worrying about light and dark, and I'm breaking the face down into big shapes. There'll be time later on to build on top of these shapes. All right, back to the exercise. All right, I've changed the filter, so now there are more value shapes. Not only that, but the original dark and light value shapes from before have changed and shifted. So I'm also gonna have to adjust those shapes. It's pretty crazy how this filter does this because this is exactly the way I paint. Even when I block out these big shapes of light and dark, they don't stay that same shape throughout the painting. I'm constantly pushing shapes, pulling shapes, redrawing things. You know, I always like to think of my painting process like sculpting with clay. I like to start out with a big mass of something and through the process of the painting, I carve away the features and carve out the face. I really recommend looking into that way of working. You know, coming from somebody who works that way that didn't work that way in the past, I just like it so much better. You know, I used to be one of those people that would draw out the painting and then kind of fill it in. I always felt that, you know, the more of an accurate detailed drawing I had, the better the portrait would be. But as time went on, I found it to be the exact opposite. I found out that that process of coloring in the lines, not only did they make my portraits too, rigid, but I found out be less accurate. I really like to find the proper placement of the features as I go. So you can see as I add more lighter shapes, it's going to add more form to the face. I've actually talked about this in another video. If you want to watch it, I'll put a link to it above. But in short, it's pretty much just about how adding more value shapes will help give you more form. It's pretty wild for a time. I kept getting my students using the same terminology of cartoonish, which I had never heard before, but they would ask me, you know, why do my portraits look so cartoonish? And I was like, huh, never thought of it that way. But the main problem is they're not finding enough 
value shapes to create that form. And that's a big thing that this exercise deals with. You know, even though we're working with just shapes of flat color, those shapes in the right places and in the right values can create form. Again, coming back to the normal portrait painting of this, you can see it's a very similar process. It's a process of adding on more shapes, adjusting those shapes, adjusting the values. Now, in the normal portrait, you're gonna be working the transition between those light and dark shapes more to make them more smooth, but the overall idea is the same. And if you struggle with this exercise and this idea of shapes of flat color creating form, you're gonna struggle when you go on to a normal portrait. All right, let's try this again, but with another example. This time I'm gonna be doing three levels of the filter. So I start off the same way, I get my drawing and I block out the big shapes with thin dark paint. It's funny, in a lot of my tutorials I find myself saying that even when I'm at this point of blocking out the two light and dark values, that it's still the drawing phase. Like I feel like I'm solving a lot of drawing issues at this point and I'm actually using both the light shapes and the dark shapes and cutting back into one another to dial in the drawing the best I can. All right, now that we have more shapes in the photo, I'm gonna have to add those in and also adjust previous shapes. For example, on the left side of the jaw here, I have to bring it out more and define the edge of it a little bit more. Another thing that this exercise is gonna help you out with is connecting shapes. I'm always talking about connecting shapes no matter what you know, subject you're painting. I find it's always best to connect shapes when you can because you can always add on smaller shapes on top of it if you wanna break it up. All right, now on this third final stage, I want you to see that there's only one lightest area. You know, this area on her nose and her cheek, you don't see that light value anywhere else because that's where the light is hitting the brightest. Because remember, the head is a sphere, just like an apple. And just how an apple is going to have a one brightest spot, so is the head a lot of times. I'll see a lot of students that won't have one area kind of the brightest area. You know, really think about where your light is coming from. If it's coming up from above, a lot of times the forehead will be a lot brighter than say the chin. Even though the chin is catching light, the nose is catching light, it's all catching the same light. Since the forehead is closer to that light source, it's going to be a little bit brighter. All right, so I feel like doing this portrait will make you a lot more comfortable the next time you go into a portrait painting because you'll have some sort of plan of attack or you know a, a set of steps how to look at a portrait and break it down and even though in this exercise it is broken down into very distinct steps it's not always going to be like that when painting a portrait in fact it's never going to be like that you're always going to have to be bouncing back and forth from different stages you know readjusting things redrawing things you know changing the colors changing the values you know this stuff isn't in exact science but i feel like this exercise can help you break bad habits and think about portrait painting differently that will in the end, make it easier and help you produce better portraits. All right, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you wanna check out my Foundations of Oil Painting course that this exercise was pulled from, I'll put a link to that in the description below. And if you wanna see what I am painting on a daily basis, you can follow me on Instagram at Forza43. I'm Chris Fornatero here telling you to go get painting.